Welcome, welcome, welcome to Mad Props. This is episode 57 of Mad Props. I am your host, Chris Schnabel, and today is a Pokemon-filled episode. We have two VGC broadcasters and the hosts of the OCO podcast, Sierra Dawn, and my really good friend, really great friend even, Joe Brown will be joining us. It was a really fun podcast. For most of you that are new, I do the I record the interview and then I record the open and close. That's how I know it was so great. Or maybe I just know because I mean, come on. I know who's doing it here. You know, I know who's doing it. But they came on, it was really great. Uh if you haven't already subscribed to the YouTube channel, uh go follow us on Instagram. The YouTube channel is Schnabel Studios. The Instagram is Mad Props pod so go follow us on those we're also on twitter at mad props pod as well that's where you're going to find clips that's where you're going to find updates i'm going to start posting more behind the scenes stuff as well like just like things of going on before interviews after interviews i was thinking of doing leading up to this interview I actually recorded me doing a bunch of stuff before this interview here and i'm going to put it together as a kind of behind the scenes of what the video is going to look like and stuff like that so definitely check that out it's on our um instagram twitter um facebook and on our youtube page so mad props pod and everything except for youtube that's schnabel studios what's going on here i just moved i know if you're a frequent listener we moved once uh we've just moved again we're in dallas texas now it's supposed to be very cold i have gone outside it is very cold <laughs> i'm not happy about that it is like it's it, it's crazy because i'm in dallas texas so you would think cold is like 30s 30s at the lowest it's lower than that it's actually lower than that in Dallas, Texas, which is very frustrating because being in Indianapolis, being in New York, being in Spokane, Washington, Boston, Connecticut, all cold places. Now we're in Dallas, Texas. In the first weekend, we're here. First weekend, we're here. Freezing. Cold. Not happy about that. What are we doing? Let's, let's get these cold fronts out of here. I'm tired of it. Although I can't really complain because... As you'll see in the video, if you go follow the Mad Props pod, as you see in the video, the day that I did all the recording stuff was very nice. <laughs> so it was very nice. I was like 80 degrees. But now it's cold. Now it's freezing. And that's unfortunate for everybody that is named Chris Schnabel because I do not like the cold. I've lived in the cold so long. I was finally happy to get out of the cold. But here we are. And also notice if you're watching, um, if you're listening, I'll describe it a little bit. But if you're watching, my setup is a little different. Um, a lot of the same stuff has returned for people that are listening. A lot of the same stuff being I had a lot of comic books, uh, a lot of Spider-Man, uh, Radiant Black, Super Mario, Kick-Ass. Um, I think I have a Steven Universe somewhere in here. Regular show. It's one of my – the regular show one's one of my favorite ones. Um, it's Mordecai and Rigby. Uh, on a doing the on a lawn mower, it's it's great. So if you're listening, you'll have to go watch because those I'm kind of explaining it, but I, it's just very colorful and very good. But the one thing you'll notice, and if you're a frequent listener to any kind of podcast that I do, I have a giant Mike Tyson knockout image signed by Mike Tyson sitting behind me. I did not meet Mike Tyson. I, I got it at an auction for, for lower than value, which is why I have it in the first place. Or I probably wouldn't have gotten it, but it, it stems completely from, and this is where I say if you've listened to me before, I read the Mike Tyson biography. It was unbelievably good. And right after I finished the biography, I ran into a silent auction that had this product. And I was like, that is so cool. I need to get that. And so I did, and I, I bid on it. I was the only bidder. I won it. I looked it up after. I was like, did I overspend? I didn't overspend. I was very happy, and now it's the centerpiece of my background, which is so awesome because I love it. You also notice there's a Matt Sheldon card. I just tried to look, and I slammed my, my, my elbow, but there's a Matt Sheldon card back there. Matt Sheldon came on the podcast recently. And the only, the only other new thing is towards the top here is a Pete Rose signed comic book. My parents went to Vegas. They met Pete Rose. He had a bunch of memorabilia because he can't get into the Baseball Hall of Fame and needs to make money somehow because baseball has banned him. And he uh, had a bunch of stuff. My parents sent me a picture that said, if Pete Rose were to sign something, what would you want him to sign? And I thought a comic book would be the coolest thing. Uh, just ha him having a comic book is really cool. And so I was like, yeah, let's do the comic book. So 
that's what we did. And now I have the Pete Rose comic book hanging up there. So that's kind of what the background looks like. But I don't want to waste too much more time. I just want to give some updates on what's going on. We're now in Dallas, Texas, which is really cool. It's cold, which is really cool. Background's different, which is really cool. If you're listening, I hope it didn't go on too long. If you're watching, I hope you enjoy looking at the background now because it's very much more aesthetic than it used to be. It really is. A lot more going on, but a lot, a lot nicer. And it's kind of cornered now, too. So it's not like a straight-on background. It's kind of like cornered off to give more depth to it you know because you know depth and fanciness is all what we're all about but let's get to joe and sierra because they're great great guests you're listening to mad props roll them intros let's go hi i'm sierra Dawn. hey i'm joe brown let's start the show Sierra, Joe, welcome to the show. We appreciate you guys being here. Now, you're, you're here because you are the OCO podcast team. I'm glad to have you guys a part of this. I'm, I'm honestly, Sierra, you may not know this. Joe, you already know. I'm probably the first fan you guys had, first listener you maybe have had. I've helped Joe with stuff because he helps me with stuff all the time, but I am it's a fan true. of the show. I do listen to the show, and, and I was probably one of the first five listeners of the show. So you're welcome is why I brought you on. He's not wrong. Hey, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. That's far. And then that's nice that it's all full circle, that we can be here on your podcast. I love that. Yeah, I, I knew that I had to get you guys on eventually, and especially because you guys are in full swing right now, and there's a lot of Pokemon to talk about. And I always turn to Joe as the Pokemon expert on my shows because he is the Pokemon expert. He's been on many a podcast of mine. I don't, is this the first or this is the second time you've been on as like an actual guest, though, right? Because one time you were on with Frankie, yeah. but that was more of like you were like a surprise. It was a bit, Frankie, yeah. here I am. Yeah, it was a bit. But then the second time, I believe, you came on for Pokemon Day. Like, we actually had you on to do Pokemon Day. Uh, so you had me on for Pokemon Day once, but then we also covered a Nintendo Direct once on one of your other programs, yeah. if you remember that. Oh, you, you've been, I've on been on the Sketching Up train I've, many times. Exactly. But for the mad, for the mad props, you know, segment of the, of the Schnabelverse, I think, I think you're right. <laughs> We're just trying to take down Feige. That's it. <laughs> That's all we're trying to do with the Schnabelverse. We're just trying yeah. to make it something big so then it becomes really disappointing in 10 years. Well, but, for anyone, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, well. I just want to tell Sierra. Sorry, Shaw. For anyone who doesn't know, and for, oh, yeah, you take over. And for Sierra. I, I just want to let everyone know I'm wearing the shirt. Schnabel and I went to college together. We've been best buds for over a decade now at this point. So that's why I just wanted to, you know, your, your mad props off. Your audience is different than the Sketching Up audience. They might not know. That's true. That's very true. I, d I do have like a little story I'm going to tell. Um, you want me to just get to it right now? Because it's a story of a show that I watch that reminds me of you when I watch it. Do you want me to just get well, to it Well, you right know, now? I'm, not, I'm, not the we had together. I'm not the producer of your show, so. Yeah, I know. Produce, my producer produce left, so. Yeah. <laughs> the producer's all of I us right now. I have produced in the background but... of your show before. You have. <laughs> you have a couple. Of Actually, recently. <laughs> You've done it very recently. Episode 50, you did it, yeah, so. Yeah. I'll just go to it now. So, so we, I was rewatching. I watched a couple of years ago. But I rewatched The Good Place, and if you've never seen The Good Place, Blake Bortles is a very big part of the <laughs> The Good Place because it's like a running joke the whole time. The Jaguars, Blake Bortles, Joe, and I used to hang out a lot playing Madden, yes. and Blake Bortles was our star quarterback. So whenever Blake Bortles gets brought up as the star quarterback in the show, it makes me laugh because the only place he's a star quarterback <laughs> is on that show <laughs> and, and Joe and Mai's Madden from college. Yeah, like those are the only in, our, in our dorm together. rooms is the only place he's a star. In our dorm rooms. Yeah. Those are the two places he's a star. So that's the story I wanted to bring up. That's why I was going to bring it up later because I may not have even brought it up because it wasn't too interesting, <laughs> but right. because we were already talking about New Haven and, and everything else. But you're wearing that. I'm wearing the Hartford uh, – uh, regional championships, which I, I got to see you at uh, last summer, I believe it was. Yeah. You were doing the regional championships. That was your first time coming to a yeah, Pokemon event, right? It was. It was a lot of fun. It, there was so much more to do than you really know. I, I made like a whole video after that on it. There's so much more you do, but I can let you guys talk more about that um, because you're the experts on it. But I'll, I bring that up because you're both VGC people. So uh, 
Sierra, why don't we start with you? Because Joe and I have talked already so much, and we don't need to hear our voices that much. How did you get into VGC uh, ca- casting? So it's funny that you say, like, we're both VGC people, because I didn't actually start as a VGC person. So I had been competing in Pokemon TCG for a while, and I actually produced uh, a whole season of the streams um when it was still grassroots streams and community streams happening and i did a smidge of casting tcg through grassroots streams and then once covid hit i was not a big fan of playing pokemon tcg online it's just not the same it wasn't fun i did not enjoy it and i was a full-time content creator for my job which meant i had to play a lot of it and i wasn't having fun so i swapped over to shiny hunting and then i um a drive was asking for people to join his wbe league um, on YouTube for VGC draft leagues. And I just was like, if you need a TCG person who doesn't know what they're doing, hit me up, hit me up, hit me up. And I guess he couldn't find anyone better to fill the spot because he eventually picked me. And then that's when I was like, hey, VGC is pretty cool. So after my WBE run, I streamed a little bit of VGC on Twitch and Pokemon reached out to me pretty quickly asking me to start casting for them for their Players Cup 3, which was incredible because I still don't know how that all came to be and then after that is when i started taking the game more seriously i wanted to be good at casting they thankfully picked me up after that first time casting because i still don't think it was that great and honestly the game was just so much fun that i kind of i kind of stuck around with it they clearly saw the potential you're like oh i don't if somebody doesn't know what they're doing they picked me up anyway like there's potential there we can pick this up we're gonna make you a superstar we're gonna make you a superstar in this do you play at all like maybe not com- or even competitively to try to learn it more or do you kind of play on your own or study like when you watch or something like that? Yeah. So funny enough, because I didn't really know like what casting was going to pan out with Pokemon. I qualified for players cup three and for players cup four, and I got picked up to cast both of them. So I got dropped from both of the competitions. So I really early on did get started in kind of like, a half a foot into the the deep end here with competing but i never actually fully got that opportunity since i have been casting like even when events came back i got to compete at one regional and i casted almost every other regional i think the one exception was when i had a conflicting event and i wasn't able to attend but i cast at every other event so it hasn't really been an opportunity that I had have with competing. I did just recently get to compete at the Portland Regional Championships, and I've been competing at locals because I hopefully get picked up to cast worlds this year. But my own goal, competitive wise, is to actually go to enough events and to do well enough that I can get a worlds invite for 2024. Now, worlds going going back to both the worlds was the one in japan recently correct that was the that was world last championships year, yeah. were you able to go to that as well i know joe you, you came on and told us a little bit about it were you able to go to japan with all that i did so i did not go related with any broadcast end of it pokemon did give me a spectator badge and with that like a couple of perks like seeing the pokemon center early but beyond that like my entire trip and stuff was paid for by myself realistically i don't know when worlds is going to be in japan again i just looking at all the past world championships i can't see them going back there anytime soon so as a lifeline pokemon fan it kind of made sense that no matter what the circumstances i just had to go so i just attended as a just as a fan just as a spectator but it was still a lot of fun yeah i mean that's that's one of those things like you can't like say no to that like it's just such a great opportunity such a major opportunity to do something not even like the pokemon part of it like you get to go to japan (laughs) like you're going to japan and not only on top of that you're going to see something that you love and something you love doing like that's amazing and if you didn't do it you'd be looking back on it in this conversation like i didn't go i should have done it I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> like, why didn't I do yeah. it? So that's an awesome opportunity, whether you got to do it or not. And Joe, you didn't cast either, right? You went as the production, uh, yep. production I team was, member? Uh, I was a subject matter expert. So I was working backstage as an expert in the game to let production know because there's a lot of moving parts, especially at the World Championships. Like, it was a pretty cool experience to see 
uh, because you could, you'd have you'd have cameramen that were speaking Japanese and lighting operators that were speaking Spanish, and like it was just the whole world coming together. So like our director would be like he would need to know okay is player one about to win or player two about to win because they have different lighting and different music and you know, all these things. So I'd say player one's gonna win next turn, and then you go okay relay to the Japanese camera operator to be ready for player one, and then. It would know which lights to turn on and everything. So it was a pretty stressful job, but it was really fun to be backstage and like see the whole opening, uh, the whole opening show with the drum sequence and seeing the director actually cutting. Like it was like our good old days in college. So I was like ready to cut to, you know, ready three, dissolve three, like you know the whole traditional uh, way of operating a, a TV broadcast. So it was a, a really interesting. Uh, perspective and it was great to be a part of it going to japan uh you know the the weather was totally ideal no problems whatsoever with the uh with the weather None. whatsoever not not at all nope so i'm assuming there was a problem with the weather it was 100 degrees with 100 percent humidity <laughs> every day i think sierra and i all both oh, almost died man. Yeah, I had heat exhaustion the entire time. I'm actually surprised I didn't get full blown heat stroke and had to go to like emerge or something because I it, it got to a point where I was just laying in my hotel room for the entire day, like just nauseated. Like I I step outside for a minute. If I don't, if I went out of the metro and tried to actually walk to my hotel, I could feel my brain swelling. Like it was. The heat was absolutely nothing to shake a stick at. It was, it was insane. And what's what's the hottest you usually see? You're Canadian, right? It doesn't get too too hot where you are, does it? I don't even I know mean, what part of Canada you are. I'm out in Ontario. Grew up on the West Coast in British Columbia. It's okay. definitely not heat like that. It was also a very humid heat in Japan. Yeah. So at least with the dry heat. I don't know. I feel like your body could sweat it off like it's fine. But the humid heat, you were instantly drenched in sweat, but it was suffocating. You can't it breathe. Was, yeah. You yeah. Can't breathe. It was so bad. I was so sick. Like, I wish desperately I could have gotten to cast, like, the world championships <laughs> in Japan. Do not get me wrong. I genuinely think I would have been sick the entire time just because of the heat. So, like, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword at that point. <laughs> Yeah, humidity is crazy. When when I was in, out in Indianapolis, I was told people in the winter that come to Indianapolis that aren't from here get sick immediately because it's very humid and it gets very cold. So, like, the humidity in the air turns basically to small ice particles and you get sick immediately. My parents came out to visit right after Christmas and they both got sick. And I was like, "This they weren't lying. Like, yeah. you come out there, you get sick immediately because you're breathing in ice and and all that but i agree with you the dry heat too i i lived in spokane for a couple of years i went out to gonzaga and I'm a, I, I like to run i like to go outside and run and play basketball outside and there will be times like i'll be going out for a run it'll be like a hundred and something degrees and you don't it'll be like 102 degrees but you don't realize it at first which is super dangerous because then you get burnt to a crisp <laughs> but like you, you don't realize it because it's so dry it doesn't feel like 102 whereas like 80 and humid could feel like 150 because <laughs> it's just brutal hot wet it's it's like having boiling water on your skin like it's just it just doesn't feel good i i i can understand that so japan was hot and then you guys <laughs> came back and now you're still casting like in different things you just got done with portland recently how was the portland trip how did that one go for you guys i'll take i'll take it first so i was i was casting because sierra was out in the field and um I guess I had less stress. It's a different type of stress because as a player, it's very stressful. Every round, every decision you have to make every single turn is very stressful. But for me, I just got to make sure, you know, I don't trip over my words and I don't, you know, say the wrong player's name and, you know, things like that. Um, so I had a lot of fun. I had the pleasure of casting the finals uh, where uh, one of my one of my friends in the community, Alex Underhill, ended up winning the regional uh, his first region in like five years, I think, that he actually came home with the title. So that was nice. And it was one of our co-casters, Len Duel. It was my first time I ever got to work with Len, even though I've known him for a very long time. So it was exciting going into Portland because we'd never worked together. You know, how would our friendship translate to on camera? And I think it worked out pretty well. So overall, I had a pretty great, you know, weekend. There's the uh, there's the tra travel nonsense because there was a... There was, a, there was a plane that had some malfunctions 
in Portland while we were there. That we followed the Pops national mid-air. news, so uh, you know, <laughs> caused, caused some commotion. Let's say in the uh, in the Portland community. Crazy story about that. Crazy story. Former guest of the show, Jackie Jamelos. The door landed four houses down from her in California. Really? really? Isn't that nuts? Yes. That's crazy. <laughs> nuts. Nuts. Oh so now God. we have you guys where the plane delayed you yeah. and her where she almost got hit by a door. <laughs> four <laughs> doors down is Dude, nuts. how do you think like home yeah. insurance like covers that? You know what I mean? <laughs> like let's say the door just like side swipes her, her house or something. Like is is uh is progressive Not gonna be like insurance will do what uh, they always do. Act of God. Yeah. Like they just summon <laughs> the door down God. on you. <laughs> Obviously, God took the door off that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you want to do that, I don't know how religious anybody is here. If you want to do that, you could say anything's an act of God, right? Like, isn't he the one? He's pulling the strings, right? So he's also pulling companies. doors off I of swear. things, I guess. <laughs> but that's that's crazy. So, Sarah, you went as a you were in the field, so you were you were competing. Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah. So I haven't competed since last year. Actually, the very first regional of last year, San Diego. So probably like exactly a year ago to this day, but I competed at Portland, um, which is very stressful for very different reasons, um, like Chopra was saying. So instead of having to like do my research on the players and the storylines and meta threats and stuff going into the event, like I'm focusing on my team and the prep kind of all around that. And it's also so interesting and different playing the event because since I've been involved with BGC, I've for 95% of the time have been attending the events as a caster. I'm backstage. I barely get to interact with anyone outside of like the production and the casters. Normally the casters, we all get off at the same time and we're all exhausted. So we all go out for food together and then we see each other the next day. We do food and then we go. Whereas I didn't even see Joe Brown the entire weekend. I saw you at one point, but I was so mentally drained from the day. I'm like, I am not talking you to anybody. You say like, hi? Sorry. Oh, man. Y'all... No, I was so done. No, no, no. I was, so, I was so mentally done. I got caught by one of the casters and I'm just like, I'm sorry. I like, I need to go. I'm so ex- like competing's hard. Kudos to those that go to every event to compete. But yeah, it was so interesting because I didn't get to see the casters essentially like at all. And instead you're only out in the field, um, just talking with everyone all day. And it, it's very different, but it's fun. So, Joe, you're going to take a back seat for a second because I'm going to talk to Perfectly Sierra. Perfectly okay. Because we, we know about Joe Brown. We know about Joe Brown. He's been on. We Sierra's already talked the about star been on a bunch of, of shows. Oko, Go listen right. to those ones. She's the star Bro, of it's a, it's a two-person <laughs> podcast. We share 50-50. Hey, I'm the podcast princess, all right? Sierra handles everything. I'm just there for show. I'm there to make it two people so Sierra has <laughs> someone to talk to, you know? <laughs> she says it's two people like that's always been the case with a two-person show it's always 50 50 no one's ever higher than the other one that's never happened before never. um but so so you do the vgc you also do um league of legends and valorant right is that am i saying that right do yeah. i just sound like yeah. moronic right now okay yeah. You do all that stuff. And you said you started streaming during COVID full time. Was that, am I correct on that? You said you started yeah, doing that? Yeah, I was streaming beforehand while working my job. And then I was a um, shift supervisor at Starbucks. And then COVID hit and they gave us a bunch of whack regulations and customers honestly sucked. I'm supposed mm-hmm. to be on quarantine because I'm sick, but I'm going to come to your store to get myself a cute little drink. So I quit because I was not about it. So then I've been full time content since then. Did they consider you an essential worker because you were at a Starbucks? Oh yeah, you're you're still That's working, ridiculous. but you're doing like ten times more things. So you're sanitizing, and yeah, it was just I was out of there very quickly. On I I was not sticking around. I, I'm sorry if anybody thinks Starbucks is essential to their day. A Starbucks worker is not an essential worker. Like you can make coffee at your house. If if there's a pandemic going on, you don't need Starbucks. I'm just saying. Sorry to the people that are working at Starbucks. But um, so you went full time content creation. What content were you doing? Was it like League of Legends? Were you doing some? Because you said you weren't really in the VGC game yet. So what kind of stuff were you doing as content? So before that, I was doing like TCG, and then I started playing the video games, but not VGC, but more so shiny hunting. So I did some shiny hunting through 
Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, and then Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee when that came out. And I've just been, like, following the generation since. And then when I got involved with the WBE, which was roughly Series 5 of Sword and Shield, is when I started actually looking at competitive battling a little bit more, which I think was also perfect timing because I was pretty sick of shiny hunting. Um, anyway, like, kudos to those who sit there continuously shiny hunting 10 hours a day, but I did that for months, and I was so... It, was, yeah, I it got so far to a point. I'm not a huge Pokemon person, but I, I get the, like, the appeal as in, like, you get a shiny, it's really cool, but spending a lot, a lot of time, like, it's it just seems like such a grind. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know if I could it do can it. can be. I'm not a big video game be. person, though. Like, I, I like my Nintendo games. I do enjoy Pokemon, but, like... I can do maybe an hour max and then I can't do any, I, I can't sit still for anything. Like it's, I'm shocked I could do a podcast. Like I can't sit <laughs> still for anything for more than 20 minutes. So like I'm work from home and I have to get up and do something every 20 minutes. Like it's, it's very tough for me, but like, I, I understand why people play it. I understand. Like I do understand the thrill of it. I was a big Pokemon go person back in the day. I, may still play now but uh i i was a big pokemon go person back in the day and i do remember finding i found the first mewtwo i ever interacted with was a shiny mewtwo and i oh, do wow. remember that be, that's like the rarest thing that could happen in that game and i was like no way and then i almost didn't catch him and i probably would not have a phone if i did not catch <laughs> that shiny mewtwo i would have been so angry so i do have the appeal of it but for me, it's just like I can't sit and play a game. I do, I do enjoy watching streamers, though, especially doing stuff like that, challenges and stuff like that. Um, as as Joe knows, I'm a big Mario Maker watcher. One of my favorite guys Mario is Maker's Ryu Car. Awesome. It's so good. The original Mario Maker, the first one, light years better than two. Light years better than two. Not even close. Good. Not even close. I'm not gonna go off on it right now because it like. How how bad two was to me made me not play it anymore. And then they shut down one. So you can't even go you back can't go and back. play new ones. Like there's no new I you can't even go back anymore. So like they made one that's worse. The the unlimited life challenge or the unlimited level challenge is a joke. The whole point of a Mario game is to try to complete it before you lose all your lives. So when there's no end to it, it's uh, all right. That's it. That's Get it off the that. soapbox, Chris. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I guess get off the soapbox. Yeah, it's just my soapbox. I'm standing on it with every other Mario Maker player. That's just so mad that they did that. But anyway, so uh, you were doing that. I do want to, Chris, real quick, so today before, you're st- you, before you go back and add a little footnote. For anyone wondering, the WBE is a draft league. And if people don't know what that means, you draft Pokemon. Say there's 10, 15 teams 15 people that say and you draft it's like first overall pick pikachu second overall pick charizard right third overall pick gengar like and you draft a team like a fantasy football you know trying to relate it to chris so, so he'd under understand it. it's a competitive league to, and- to be honest <laughs> You, if you never said anything, I just figured that was a Pokemon term that no, I was it's like, not. all right, it's, people are listening to understand. Right. I had no I'm idea. Trying to clarify. My bad, my trying bad. To clarify. No, 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 you're good. You're good. So, That's the whole, we're all learning. Yeah. That's the whole so point when, of this. Yeah, the, the it's WBE, basically higher learning, but the name's taken. Right. WBE is one specific league and there's a million different people that create leagues and stuff. But uh, that was the, that was the big content creator one that Sierra got to be part of. That, that was actually the first time I'd ever seen Sierra, either in real life or on the internet because she was in that draft league and she beat a world champion in a, in a draft in, as yeah. a novice, oh. as a Pokemon VGC novice, she beat a world champion in that league. So that was a big deal. But uh, I yeah. told you that they saw the potential. They saw the potential. It was there. It's like, yeah, you may have been drafted in the sixth round, but guess what? There's a lot of potential there. You're going to be a superstar. But that's awesome. That's an awesome league. I wish I knew what that was back and then. then. My other note, I did try to tune into that type of stuff. Yeah, so my other note, my other footnote, uh, to just add- addendums to the conversations, the Players' Cup, for anyone who doesn't know, were online tournaments <laughs> that every, you played everybody in the world, and you, if you hit a certain ranking, you qualified for the next stage where you only played people from the top players from your region so it was the top 256 players and that got down to top 32 and top 16 or whatever and so sierra also qualified being the i think it was top 508 or something like that whatever it was at the time i don't remember uh the numbers so like if you in all of the statistics like of all the players that played in the open 
bracket of the tournament, if you qualified X top 500 or whatever, then you made it to the next stage that she was not able to play in because she was too busy casting those events. So just wanted to add it for more context for your, so your audience legit. that she is an epic gamer, even if she doesn't realize it. She's legit. She's Aww. legit. That's that's what you're saying. She okay. she's it. She's she's the one. So then why why not if you were having so much success, why not continue trying to go on that side of it? Why go into the casting side of it? So it's like back and forth cuz realistically, I enjoyed casting. Also casting um is a lot more stable. It's funny to say a lot more stable than content creation because casting is so unstable. But realistically, it was more stable than content creation. Also, at the point, like, I qualified for Players' Cup 3. Prior to that, my Pokemon VGC was pretty limited. So regardless of kind of where it was going to go for me, because um, I thought my path was content creation going on forward, it still was, like, the better idea to cast because then regardless it was going to be bringing more attention to my name as someone who is legitimate within the vgc community um to kind of legitimize the content i was creating i didn't really think that it was gonna i had no idea i was gonna get picked up for players cup 4 i didn't know if i was gonna get picked up beyond that so it was just kind of like a net positive overall um and like, I like competing, and I do want to get my invite, but casting is a lot of fun. Like, there is something, there is such a few limited amount of people that are entrusted with the task of telling the player stories, um, and that's kind of special in a way, whereas anyone can realistically compete. So, I think if I had to make the choice 10 times over, 10 out of 10 times, I would pick casting, because it's such a unique opportunity that people strive for and try to get this, so... I'm just yeah. really grateful for it. Yeah, it's you love Pokemon and you, you're competitive. Like you want to compete, but I understand all that as well. I mean, I, I I got into broadcasting for the same reason, so I completely understand that. That's awesome, though. So, out of the two of you, who's the bigger Pokemon expert? I'm gonna say me. Okay, so I what do you? Know, mean, Joe Brown might fight what me what on this. Hold on, wait, 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 wait a second here. <laughs> What do you mean by Pokemon expert? Because there's clearly many different avenues um, we could go down with that question. There's that's true. That's true. Let's let's take it step by step. Like who could could either of you name if I just said a number, you can name the Pokemon. Are any either of you Pokemon that X, no. well versed? Okay, we're Pokemon fans. We're not. No, like, I just, yeah. I said expert. I said yeah. expert. Is that how All you... right, that, that's not expert. That's like something yeah. else. That's, that's doing too much. It's like oh, number six seventy three. Doing I know. too much. Okay. So if I, I mean Sierra's probably I, I, watched I guess... more of the anime than me. I've only ever watched like the beginning as a kid, really, and some of the movies. So like you might have it there, but. I mean, I, I mean, you you also play TCG, and I like only kind of casually play TCG, so that's why I say it depends on the question that we're asking. But if it's like Pokemon Stadium two mini games, I kind of got her beat, you know. Okay, <laughs> that is not my fault that I've been begging to play Pokemon two Stadium like Stadium two mini games on stream, and the first time that y'all do it is the one broadcast I'm not at. That's not my fault. Stats or stats. I would have smoked you. Stats or stats. I, I won more games than she did that weekend. Game, and I knew that you were instantly going to gravitate towards that because you knew your only competition wasn't there. <laughs> this is what you started. She just Chris. calls you out. Yeah. She, yeah, she just called you out. Good. She called you it's out. Only, I guess, listen, I guess now you guys have to play There's only one way to together. settle this, which I've been asking for for two years now, is for Sierra to 1v1 me in original Pokemon Snap on the Nintendo 64. And I'm she gonna, ducked me every event. She's like, yeah, I let's do it. it. And she's like, oh, busy. we just don't have time. We got, oh, we don't have time. Like, you make time. No, no, I'm messaging our producer right now, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the next event that we both work at. Um, I want to play mini games. All right. No snap. We want to do Wait, snap. Would you, cons would you consider? Oh, sorry, Pokemon mini, uh, the snap. Yeah. Pokemon Snap, an elite Pokemon game. Yes. Like elite, elite. The first one. The second one was fun. I. That's what I, I said. Yeah, the first yeah, one. I enjoyed, but the first, the first one, 
is is like just even when we because you know as Chris knows when he went to Hartford and you see the old gaming system set up and you know you can play and stuff like yeah when we I play them sometimes at the regionals and it's still just just walking through like the volcano and Charizard or Char whatever Charmeleon and you know throwing a Pokeball into the fire and all the all the old things is just it's it still gets about heartstrings you know. I think you hit the Charmeleon into the volcano and Charizard comes out yeah, yeah, yeah. of the volcano. If I, if I remember this correctly, I haven't played the original Pokemon Snap in a couple of years, but I think that is what happens. And that's in the volcano one with all of the fire Pokemon, which I believe is level four. Yeah. I might be wrong. I'll take your word. I, have play, I played it pretty religiously when I was a kid. And then when it came back out, actually, no, I got it on like the Wii or something like that. And I played it pretty religiously again when I got it on the Wii or whatever I got it on there. So how did, how did you guys, I'm assuming it was through VGC, but how'd you guys meet? How'd you become friends? And, and then we'll go to the podcast. So how'd you guys meet? How'd you become friends? Quick footnote. First, I messaged the producer. She said she loves Pokemon Snap. And instantly she's like, what's the beef that we're settling? (laughs) (laughs) So next event, we both work. This is happening. (laughs) Okay. That's fine. Um, I don't know. I guess I could, I could handle, I guess I could handle this one. Uh, so like I said, I didn't know Sierra, um, but I had just gotten picked up by the official Pokemon stream two weeks before the world shut down in 2020, right at the end of February. And I worked my first event and I was feeling great. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm on top of the world. I'm going to be going to this event and this event. It's going to be a great year. And then the whole world shut down. So then for like a year and a half, I did nothing. Never heard a word from Pokemon. Never heard anything. But then Players Cup 4, which was the online competition through that you could play from your home, uh, they reached out to me to cast. And Sierra was also one of the other casters. So we didn't work together. We were in two different pairs. I was with Gabby. Um, my co-caster and she was with Daz as her caster but we did all hang out in the same calls and we played Pokemon Unite because as we were recording was when Pokemon Unite first launched so we had like some fun team building bonding things during those days um, and then it wasn't like I want to say we started up the next season in 2022 with official streams again uh, and like traveling for the live stream stuff but like was it? Re- I think it was NAIC 2022 was genuinely our first time casting together, right? I don't think we did a regional together. Yeah, I think we... I don't think we did a full regional together, but um, a common practice for regionals to kind of find out who has synergy, who doesn't quite have synergy, since that's super, super important to casting, is especially on day one of competition, kind of swapping around casting pairs. So I do think that we... We did get to cast together at some point and it very just much so clicked in terms of our casting styles and just our personalities. And then for NAIC, which would have been the first international either of us ever got to cast, they asked both of us on and they wanted us to cast together, which is pretty cool. And we crushed it. And then how no, did the, the podcast come from this? <laughs> Well, I, I figured that. I do. I, I, whenever Joe is on air, and I used to be your biggest hype man, but then my Twitch stopped working for some reason. Every time it was on Twitch, was I not in that chat? Were, I was on the chat. I was I was. When I go back and see the If anybody ever said anything yeah. against you, I went at them. <laughs> I went at them. If somebody said anything against Joe Brown, I went at them. Which like, happened? No, yeah. you don't say anything bad about Joe Brown. Yeah. It happened occasionally, but I said I put them in their place. Well, you want to meet you anywhere. You want to handle anywhere. the podcast, Sierra? <laughs> Yeah, so we we got to cast NAIC together, and we actually both got picked up to cast the uh, um, World Championships in London as a casting duo. The same thing, like we just we have a similar sense of humor that works well together. Um, our casting styles, um, he we're both play by plays, but um, he's adjusted into a color caster. But I'm a pretty selfish play by play that likes to do analysis. So it kind of like. Our styles mesh together really, really well, and we were just able to just sit there and vamp and really, really have a laugh. And then the next um, season went by for Pokemon, and it was something so that was kind of tossed around. I know that for myself, I can't speak for you, Joe Brown. I know that I've wanted to do a VGC podcast for a while, but it's always like, who am I actually going to sit here with for two hours every single week and actually be able to talk about stuff with, right? And... 
at some point we were actually talking about a podcast um me um our other caster jake muller and then joe brown and the three of us were talking about it and ultimately um jake was pretty busy and me and joe brown were kind of more aligned with like kind of the vision so after that we're like yo let's actually let's actually create this so it was kind of a couple months in the making before we actually launched which we ended up doing prior to the world championships obviously to build off of that hype but we thought as well since we are we still cast with other individuals but we are known for casting together as well that it kind of worked out and i think it did honestly yeah i think you guys do a great job you can hear that like the the one thing about having a podcast with other people is you have to kind of be friends with them right like it doesn't really work as much when you're not and you can tell very early on when you're not friends with somebody or you, you maybe you're friends but you're you're not really close like the closer you are with somebody i always feel like the podcast is going to turn out better that's why i like having joe on because we're close <laughs> and and i know it's going to be a good time whenever you're on so the name oko which is one hit knockout who came up with yeah. that and what why why go with oko is it just like that big of a deal when people really catch so I'll handle I'll handle this one. Let's let's go you know flashback to roughly April slash May of 2023. There in the Pokemon VGC format, one of the new legendary Pokemon is named Ting Lu. If you don't know what he looks like, he looks like a kind of like a deer moose looking thing. Chernobyl. Uh, he's in the new games. He's the dark and the ground type. So Ting Lu is mm -hmm. a very bulky, very defensive, not offensive, just like defensive stalwart and is very tough to break through with the Pokemon. And so what a lot of people started running was an attack called Fissure, which is a, if it's back from Gen 1, right from Red and Blue. If you click Fissure, it is a 30% accurate move, but if it connects, it is an automatic one hit KO, regardless of what HP they're at. So it's a high risk reward factor right it only works 30 percent of the time but if it hits it knocks out so a lot of people started running ting or ting lu fissure and it became a big meme in the community during that regulation during that format for for pokemon then people were using sheer cold which is essentially the same thing but an ice attack of 30 percent accurate chance to one hit ko guillotine is another thing so all these oko moves all these one hit ko's started really getting into the meta because it was easier to just try to 30 percent knock out something than deal with some of these really bulky pokemon right and so Jake Muller and I had cast very baseball of them, yeah, <laughs> right, very much three true outcomes of them uh, <laughs> to to do a Pokemon. So Jake Muller and I had casted the what was it Fort Wayne, where, yeah, Fort Wayne, where Sierra was the host, and that was the kind of the the inspiration of the three of us. So Jake and I, every I like having caster duo names because I think it's just silly and I think it's fun. And so Jake and I never had a caster duo name, even though we've known each other since 2017 and like worked grassroots events and stuff. And so what I did with Jake was I said, we are the fissure no guard combo. No guard is an ability that said your moves cannot miss. So you have to do some silly things if you want to do it in game, swap some abilities around, but you can get a scenario where a no guard Pokemon clicks Fissure and it's 100% accurate one hit KO. So I took that Fissure no guard combo into the Oko combo as we were having the discussions on what we wanted to call our, our podcast. And so when I said Fissure no guard, nothing but hits, I was like, oh, we could have Oko, nothing but hits, like on our podcast, right? It's just all bangers, all entertaining, all fun time. Wait. But there were other, there were, no, yes. No, 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 wait a Hold second. On. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. I, go ahead. Uh, I am just saying, I, I I have the group chat with the three of us. Yeah. And before you even hit the Fissure No Guard Caster combo, I just said, I was thinking of a couple names. I think One Hit KO okay. stood out to me. And then you were like, well, me and Jake are the Fissure No Guard combo. Okay. And then I was like, oh? And then Jake was like, oh? <laughs> and then we, we, have, we evolved into Oko from there. I'm not going to let All you right, take credit because... I think we were going to be the no guard or whatever, no guard podcast if y'all had your way. No, I, I don't know. I don't think. <laughs> I just want to say, 
Vision, No Guard, Nothing But Hits is like the coolest <laughs> 2000s hit album I've ever heard of. That's the best. Vision, No Guard, the band, Nothing But Hits is the album. Yeah, that's true. It is a great <laughs> album, man, if you ever needed it. That's when, when you guys get to that point, when you are putting out the best moments of your podcast. Vision, go, no, uh, Vision No Guard, Nothing But Hits, title. And I want credit for that. You guys get Jake, credit for that. So we can't. Have, yeah, rest in peace, Jake. Come on. He was our first ever guest. We we gave him that honor, you know, to be the first guest. Yeah. So, you know, that was nice of us. And why didn't – but if, if it was supposed to be the three of you, why why didn't he join up? He just didn't – He just had too much going on busy. with his schedule, and he always has trivia. He's a big trivia guy, so sometimes if he wanted to record. So we just decided – and he was totally – he was the one that suggested it. He was like, why don't you guys try together since we were more – we were more committed. Like, we wanted to hit a certain deadline – to get the first episode out. So we were like, all right, we got to make a logo by this, by this day and get the recording by this day and get the, you know, we, we also use Riverside, right? So get the program and get all this stuff by certain dates. And if we were kind of just like wavering around, Jake was like, listen, go on without me, you know, like the little, like dying, like, you know, and and so go on without me. And then, you know, we'll never (laughs) forget him. Would you ever consider bringing him back though? Like, uh, I love Jake. Yeah, like, love it would Jake. be it'd be sick. I don't know if he can with capacity with his job because what I was about to say is like myself and Joe Brown, like we're both casters and our job is, you know, this online presence. So there's a lot more for us at stake with a weekly podcast where we also have the time more so to be doing a weekly podcast. Whereas Jake, frankly, is more of a life than we do. Um <laughs> So he's kind of busy. <laughs> so if he wants to, he's more than welcome to any time. We love Jake. We we thought that the three of us would be good on a podcast for a reason. It's just uh, we have a lot more like time to dedicate towards this that is actually like beneficial to our careers. And for him, it's just like not quite the same case. Jake, we may see you again on that podcast. And the podcast <laughs> has been doing pretty good. You guys look like you're growing pretty quickly. It's what what is it? Six months now. Technically, yeah, Six right? Months, it's that, been awesome. yeah. Even though it's most of chance. August was a whip yeah. because we only got the one uh, world championship yeah. recording. So I'd say I'd say like f- five, if you think about it, really, with just the one upload in August. And it, I look, I mean, I, I looked at the numbers of the podcast before, and for five months, I think it's doing pretty well. You guys not think that? You laughed when I said that. I thought it was doing pretty I well. I don't even no, know our numbers. Sierra no, has our info. Is. I don't know. Like... I don't know any of our analytics. I think no, you have like 600 it, on Twitter, 500 on YouTube. You guys, yeah. for five months, is No, the solid. laughing wasn't anything about the numbers. It was more so like the, yeah, August was a whiff part of it. But no, like <laughs> actually like where this podcast has been, I think is incredible because I think the numbers like that are there are fantastic. And I'm sure there's somebody that's, viewed the numbers listening whatnot that's like actually that's kind of uh, numbers about it but i think the difference that we also get to see is with the community feedback of it so we post an episode we do get community feedback we get to see things referenced by other content creators even competing at portland there wasn't time where i sat down and my opponent told me he listened to oko and the people around me also told me that they listened to oko there was Majority of rounds I sat down and it wasn't, hey, Sierra, I know you for your content creation. Hey, Sierra, I know you for you being a caster. It was, hey, Sierra, I listen to your OCO podcast. I'm a fan. So it was such big feedback at the regional that there were so many people that actually had tuned into this podcast that I think is really, really cool and not necessarily something a number could dictate. Well, if anybody's going and looking at the numbers, like, uh, it's not that great. They're, they're wrong. They're actually wrong. Like it's not in this day and age. Let me just say, I I work in social media like that. I, I work with different companies. I work and I run their social medias basically. And the five months having 10,000 followers or whatever, that's not actually something that's super sustainable. If you look at the biggest content creators that have been out there for a while, they have like 10 million followers they've been around for 15 years so like five months to be at 500 it's 100 subscribers a month you know that's pretty damn good that's pretty good you know like that's a really good number to be at i celebrate our numbers our numbers are are, aren't that high right now but they're compared to december 
they're insane. Like we had 75 subscribers in December and we're at almost 200 now. Like, and it's so like, you got to celebrate like how fast that part's growing. Not, so if anybody's looking like eh, 500 in five months, that's nothing. That's because you're so sucked into the somebody putting out a really dumb video and getting 12 million views and now having 10,000 subscribers. That's really not how you build something sustainable, though. Another thing about that, and this is 100 percent true for anybody that just wants to hit it big to become big. It's 100 percent true. The people that get that 10 million dollar or 10 million, 10 million view video and then get like 10,000 subscribers off of it. No engagement. None. You don't get that really again because you get no engagement. The engagement numbers are really bad, and that's what puts you on the For You page. That's what puts you on someone's like home page. That's what puts you in the front of YouTube is, is the engagement that you get, um, especially early on and the more people watch. So that's – People think like, oh, I'm just going to make that $10 million or 10. Why I say million every freaking time? <laughs> 10 <Every> million time. <laughs> view hit. Everyone's like, I want to get that so I can get as many, so many followers as I can. But usually it doesn't work because after that, the people don't come back. And that's what you need is the retention. And yeah. what you're talking about, the community is going, you know, saying how great you guys are doing. That's the retention right there. That's the people listening. Those are the people commenting. Those are the people that are listening to your thing. You've hit your community and you've hit it in full. So I think – Whatever that person wants to say, they're wrong, and you're do you guys are doing a great job. Like I think you guys are Thank building you. really good. And I'm so glad think- that Joe Brown's on this and on this podcast because <laughs> like I've been with Joe with podcasts that he's tried to do. Like I I'm so happy that you guys are having. Like I can't even express how happy I am that Joe you have this podcast. Like I, I really can't because there's been I've been with you with the uh, with the no, other yeah, ones. I've been with you. Like I've been yeah. right there. Like and. and 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 I know I know this means so much to you, so I really yeah. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. So before well, I just, before we go, I just wanted to oh, add, yeah, ahead, I just Joe. wanted to add on. You know, thank you, I appreciate it. And you know, Sierra and I, we kind of lightning in a bottle. Like even the first time working together at NAIC, and then how we worked at Worlds that year in in London, and you know, all the way up to Oko and I, like you just did hit. We did hit lightning in a bottle on the commentary and, and you know conversational sense but to me like i never to the, i didn't even know what our subscriber count was like i said on the podcast princess i don't know what our analytics are i don't know what our spotify <laughs> downloads any you know but like to me the thing i looked at was viewers right because we could I, it's not the greatest number but we could tangibly see if we cl- if we post the link on twitter and then like i remember the first episode i was just like please god if this episode gets 100 views i'm going to be ecstatic right and we instantly in the first day had over 300 views so we had like people were interested and we have our social media engagement reach whatever you want to call it to get to to transition people to listeners right and then uh i've been sending our girls yeah. i don't know what sierra wants but like Every time I'm like, okay, once we had that first episode with oh, 300 episodes, like if every episode can have 100 views, I'm going to be excited. And then when we kept clearing that, every episode was getting 300, 400, 500 views. I'm like, all right, you know, if every episode can get 300 views, I'm going to be excited. And now we're above that. If every episode can get 500 views, I'm gonna, like, that's where, that's how I have been feeling the growth right now. Like we had an episode that got like 1200 views in one day. Cause we had a great com- uh, uh, content creator on Moxie boosted. And like, that's cooler to me than how many people subscribed on that day. Cause like we were able to actually get some new listeners and then the next episode was 600 and 700. Like, like so we don't get a thousand every time, but clearly there was some continual people that listened to Moxie boosted for the first time and then stayed for the following episode. So I do think we're on a great, you know, path and it's also, it's also fun every week too. Yeah. And that's the best part. Yeah. And it's funny that you talk about like these numbers that you're excited. Cause it's like, for me, like I've done content creation for a while and I'm very grateful for the success that the podcast has in the way. I feel like it's been a little numbed for me based off my content creation past, um, just because I've been doing content creation for so long. But what I was really excited about for the podcast is I haven't really been looking at the numbers as much as more so kind of like the community sentiment of it. As I said, Portland, people kept saying that they were watching. But what I really, really loved and what was the biggest like, wow, this podcast has left a mark was... Me and Joe Brown got to cast LAIC together. And there was hype around us casting together as a duo because we were the Oko duo. Like, people knew us from the podcast as these are the two that run this podcast. And 
We had a lot of vamping time at LASC. <laughs> there was a lot of downtime. There was a lot of time where us as the casters were on vamping. And I mean, I, I can be known for my rants and stuff. And at one point, um, after we came out of a break, I made a comment about like, yeah, because who would ever willingly sit here and watch me and Joe Brown talk about something for hours, which was a <laughs> reference to the OCO podcast. And for me, it was just like kind of a sly easter egg to get into our our broadcast right i obviously Mm -hmm. don't want to be too obvious about it it was like if you know you know but i went back and watched the twitch chat and everybody knew what i was talking about like there's so many people like oh oko easter egg oh my gosh talking about oko like everybody knew and i felt like that was the coolest thing because regardless if someone's a regular listener or not they know the podcast they know that we're the host of it and i thought that was like the coolest mark we could have left on the community yeah that's amazing like i said that getting that community following is amazing so that's that's awesome that you have that so sierra before we go i usually on this podcast i try not to talk too much about what's already known like you guys are on a podcast but i wanted more to get out about the podcast and i wanted to learn about it so other than pokemon other than league of legends other than Valorant that I keep feeling like I'm saying, saying other right. than all that, other than content, all that, other than the content. The reason I feel like I'm saying it wrong is because I'm saying it off the top of my head. So I'm not like, look, I'm not reading anything, which I should be. Maybe this would go better if I did that. If, uh, <laughs> uh, if other than all that, what do you, what do you do outside of the gaming? What do you do outside of the, the VGC and the TGC? Like what are some stuff you do outside of that? Not much. Cause, uh, Having a job in casting, people don't really recognize it because they think that you only work weekends. There is 12 hours days of sitting there studying your VOD reviewing, not only for your own improvement, but watching back over teams, over players, play styles. Not so much relevant for Pokemon as maybe something like Valorant, but you're doing a lot of studying for that. So as it stands, a lot of what I do actually is just dedicated around my work in every sense. And if it's not actually about the casting sense of it, it's about the YouTube sense of it, since I've been trying to be more involved in that in my own personal content creation outside of Oko. If I actually get to do anything outside of that, um, if it's not video gaming, I love puzzles. And I've been looking at (laughs) the puzzle, the Jigsaw Puzzle Championships. You try and build a 500-piece puzzle as fast as you can, and I've watched VODs of it, and there's no way that I can't compete on that same level, is all I'm saying. <laughs> so you're just ultra competitive, is what you're saying. Like if, if you're not competing with Pokemon, if you're... Yeah, you're ultra competitive. That's amazing. That's amazing. Does, does always working with the content creation get a little exhausting? Like, what, what do you do when, like, you just need a second? Other than puzzles, like, like I can't imagine you could be on all the time with it. Lay in bed... Um, <laughs> dreading existence like I don't it's I'm not gonna say that I have a worky like a healthy work-life balance that's for sure but um yeah um unfor- like not unfortunately because I'm really fortunate I get to work with Pokemon and I get to do all of this stuff but Pokemon has been something that I have been involved with um, since I can remember it's been my entire life I remember trading like having opening packs as like a four-year-old i remember my playing pokemon red for the first time my parents got me that and playing the old nintendo 64 game so it kind of turned my hobby into a career for me which is still kind of really much to a struggle at some points because then i took every other hobby and also turned them into a career looking at something like valorant so it's kind of not perfect in that sense it's still something i'm really much so working on but those moments where it's like, oh, I'm all Pokemon out. It's kind of like a moment of reflection. Like, you're so lucky to be in a position that you are Pokemon out. Like, come on, get a grip. Like, chill a little bit. Well, it's 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 great that you can like realize that like you're lucky enough to be Pokemon out. But I don't think I think you could still be Pokemon out from it. Like, you can too much of a good thing is a bad thing. You know, everybody says that. You know, you have too much chocolate, you're gonna hate chocolate. But I'm not saying you're going to hate Pokemon. I'm just saying, like, it's okay, I think, to feel Pokemon out. But and you have other outlets, it sounds like that. And you are, you, you did hit, like, a point in life where you have all these hobbies and you are able to make them jobs, which most people can't. Like, I love playing basketball. I'm telling you right now, you're never going to see me in the NBA. Not even for a second. <laughs> like, I, you're never going to see not me there. Not even during but, garbage and, time? And, and the opposite. 
Not even during garbage. The closest I'll ever get is when I sat the seventh row at, in the <laughs> Orlando game. That's the closest I'm going to get to the NBA floor. I'll tell you right now. But you've taken these hobbies and, and put them into into stuff like that. And I mean, I what I what I'm trying to say is I feel like doing that even as a job can already clear your head because they're the hobbies that help you clear your head. So it probably doesn't hit as much. Like uh, when I'm working, I sometimes can't stand what I'm doing because it's not necessarily like a love and a passion of mine. Like I enjoy doing it. I enjoy doing the video work, but like I have to go play basketball when I'm done or go for a run because I can't, it's not, it's not something I always saw my job being or something like that. So I completely understand that. So, so where can everybody find Oko? Where can they find you guys on social media? Let's get some plugs in. Plug some stuff. Let's go. Joe Brown, All right. go. I'll try to remember. So uh, our main forms are our YouTube oh, video that we upload <laughs> Thursdays at noon. So uh, every Thursday at noon Eastern is when we upload our weekly Oko podcast episode. We also have a Twitter uh, as well, which I believe is Oko podcast uh, tied to the Instagram of Oko podcast. Our TikTok hopefully will bring uh, bring more TikToks back because we had some some pretty fun uh, ones where a lot of people really hated Sierra on <laughs> on some of our opinions about uh, some of the Pokemon characters. But hey, do you need me to jump on TikTok and defend you <laughs> like I did Joe Brown on Twitch? Do you need me to do no, it? I'll do I... it. Honestly, controversial and loving it. If I'm going to say a Pokemon character is bad and people want to hate me for it, they can't open up their eyes. That's not my fault. Exactly. Uh, and then our... Take that. What, just off the top of my head, our email, if anyone wants to email us, is theokopodcast at gmail.com. But more importantly, we can give you the link too, Chris. We have a Discord that is really where all of our conversations happen. That's where we talk with our community every week. We actually build teams together every month with our, our community. And it's like an OCO team. And we've had content creators make YouTube videos with them and, and stuff like that. So uh, we have a, a fun little community building in that Discord. So, But yeah, mainly just Thursdays at noon Eastern is uh, is our weekly uploads. for, And we're on Spotify, Apple. We'll, you know, we're, I don't know actually where we are. Sierra handles that. So she just tells me that we're, we're on those. And I believe Anywhere you get your yeah. podcast. I Have you not done the Pokemon socials like call out enough times that you can just adapt and plug and play with Oko podcast and be able to run through it. I guess. Like, yeah. Well, we don't have a Twitch on. yet. Come we don't on, have Joe a Twitch. Brown. I feel like I registered. I could be wrong. I'm going to register one right, <laughs> right after now. This. Oh, I'm going to do it right now. You're going to have to pay me so much money for that <laughs> name. <laughs> I'm going to charge you a I fortune th- for Oko podcast. I think, I think I was smart enough to, uh, to do this, but, um, just in case. I, I maybe was not just a not. Sarah, but how about you? I where don't... can people, where can people find you on socials to follow you and your Twitch for channel me? and stuff like that? Yeah. For me, I'm Sierra Dawn X3 on majority of platforms. That is going to be Twitter as well as Instagram. If you're looking at TikTok, um, Sierra Dawn TTV. I definitely need to change that because I'm not a full-time Twitch streamer anymore. If you're looking on Twitch, if you want to try and catch any of the rare broadcasts when they happen, or you want to check out the YouTube videos that actually should be coming in a surplus, including my recent experience at the Portland Regional Championships, it'll be just straight up Sierra Dawn. And all of these links for people listening and watching are right in the description. So you can find all of them. They, they plugged them, but now you can just scroll down and click. You don't even have to actually search it. So it's all going to be right there. Well, thank you so much, guys, for joining. I really enjoy the podcast. Even though I'm not the biggest Pokemon head, I do enjoy listening, and I enjoy listening to you too. So thank you for coming on, Matt Props, and being a part of all this. Thank you. It's been, it's been a pleasure. It's, it's been, been fun. fun. I appreciate it. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Sierra, for joining me on another episode of Mad Props. Hey, remember, if you're not subscribed to the podcast, subscribe wherever you're listening. Subscribe to the YouTube. We're trying to build that YouTube following up. Go subscribe to our channel, Schnabel Studios on YouTube. Mad Props, anywhere you're going to listen, go do that. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Mad Props Pod. There you can find all the updates. You'll see clips. You'll see, well, you will interact with you. I interact with anybody that reaches out to us. We'll interact with you, all that stuff. Mad Props Pod on Instagram, 
Facebook, and X or Twitter, whichever one you want to call it. Make sure you go follow Schnabel Studios as well. You can see Southern Hospitality. There was a new sketching up that comes out this week. There was also one last week that the Southern Hospitality crew took over sketching up, so you can go check that out. This week there will be another or, no, sorry, in two weeks, there'll be another sketching up as well. So definitely go check that out. That's on the Schnabel Studios YouTube page or find it wherever you find sketching up. And file Southern Hospitality as well because that is one of my favorite podcasts on this channel. Um, it is with Kyle Scott and Chris Taylor. They talk about everything Southern entertainment, basically, that you can think of and a lot of anime. Um, it's a monthly podcast. You can find that on the Schnabel Studios YouTube page as well. Thank you all for joining us. We really appreciate you being here. Hey, help us out. Subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe to the channel. Follow us. That helps us out more than you can imagine. And we appreciate you being here. Leave us a comment if you really liked it. Tell us what you liked about it. Just tell us anything. We don't really care. We'll interact with you. We love interacting with our fans. Hey, see you later. We'll see you in two weeks. This has been another episode of Mad Props. Yay! Yeah.